Well, hey guys, if you are new here, I'm a board certified dermatologist. And in this video, I'm gonna be going over 17 ways in which having diabetes can impact your skin. Diabetes is really common. It is a group of disorders characterized by high blood sugar and disturbances in carbohydrate and lipid metabolism. All right, number one is acanthosis nigricans. This is a skin condition where you have dark velvety plaques on the sides of the neck, under the armpits, can happen over your knuckles and the sides of the face, and it is a marker of insulin resistance which occurs in diabetes. It can precede the onset of diabetes, and it's thought to be due to insulin levels binding to receptors in the skin cells. And a lot of people think that it's either uh, hyperpigmentation, but it's really just skin thickening. And in some cases, it can improve when the diabetes is under better control, but for others, it does persist. Topical treatments, may help improve it, but for the most part, they really only minimize the appearance. It still persists. I have a video all about this condition, so if you're dealing with it, I'm gonna link it down below in the description box if you wanna learn more. Number two, you can turn yellow. It's called keratinemia, and it's diffuse yellow-orange discoloration of the skin. It may be due to a deficiency in conversion of carotene to vitamin A, leading to buildup of this yellowish pigment in the skin. And it may also be due to a combination of that, plus the collagen in our skin gets changed by the high levels of sugar in the blood, and that combination can lead to yellowing of the skin. Number three is a hallmark finding of diabetes, and that is called diabetic dermopathy, otherwise known as shin spots because it happens on the shins, these little round oval sores that have a dark brown rim around them. They are brought about after maybe you whack your shin, they're secondary to trauma, but they persist due to poor healing, which occurs in diabetes. Number four, diabetic thick skin. This is actually pretty common with longstanding diabetes. It's a result of the elevation in blood glucose changing the collagen in the deeper layers of the skin. It can cause swelling of the collagen, and that can cause thickening and stiffness of the skin. And what happens is the fingers lose the ability to straighten. It starts with the pinky finger and then it begins to affect the fingers moving all the way to the thumb and that inability to straighten the fingers due to thickening of the skin is called the prayer sign because when you put your hands together, you cannot put the palms together because the skin is so thickened and tightened. Number five is similarly related. It is a condition called scleroedema, basically thickening and diffuse redness on the back upper back and the neck. And this has to do with swelling of the collagen in the deeper layers of the skin in that area. It almost looks like you got a sunburn up there. The skin is very thick. Now number six is not always due to diabetes, but in the vast majority of cases of this condition, it is associated with diabetes. And that is this condition called necrobiosis lipoidica. This starts out as little bumps on the shins that expand. With time, that can expand and then an ulcer can form. Now on the shins, not only do you have poor circulation there because of the nature of the anatomy of the blood vessels, but with diabetes, you have even worse circulation. So it's a setup for poor healing. This condition can be really hard to treat and can be a source of significant morbidity for patients because the skin does break down. It can be treated with steroid injections, and it also can be treated with aspirin, pentoxyphylline. Now these medications and treatments, they offer some benefit, but in many cases, the condition persists. Now I mentioned at the beginning of the video that diabetes is a disease in which there is a disruption in the metabolism of both carbohydrates and lipids. Diabetics tend to have high triglycerides, that is a type of fat in the blood, and one skin manifestation that can occur in diabetes is something called eruptive xanthomas. These are the sudden onset of crops of firm yellow bumps that have a red rim. This is a reflection of high triglycerides. Now, unfortunately, when the diabetes is treated and under better control, this will remit. Now, you can see eruptive xanthomas 
in patients taking medications that raise their triglycerides too high as an adverse effect. So it's not exclusive to diabetes, but it certainly is something that we see in diabetics a fair amount as a result of elevation in triglyceride levels. Number eight remains a mystery, and that is something called diabetic bullae. Bullae is a medical term for blisters. The blisters most commonly affect the, the hands and the feet. They range in size anywhere from a few millimeters all the way to centimeters. It's thought that diabetic bullae or blisters in diabetic patients may be a manifestation or secondary to the neuropathy that diabetics develop. So neuropathy is basically nerve damage to the nerves in the skin, the periphery, can cause numbness and tingling in the hands and feet, poor healing, abnormalities, and kind of sweating. And one manifestation of that neuropathy may be these diabetic bullae, which are big blisters. In diabetes, you have damage to both the small and large blood vessels, and blood vessels and circulation throughout the skin is key to skin health. And when that is impaired, you can actually have death of the skin, dry gangrene most commonly affects the hands and the feet, like the toes. Now, because of the neuropathy, diabetics have poor sensation in their fingers and toes. The skin doesn't heal well, and they have uh, blood vessel injury from their disease. So that is a setup for the formation of ulcers on the fingers and toes, sores that really can become infected and serve as an entry point for infectious microorganisms. So definitely a source of morbidity to diabetics. Speaking of hands and feet, oddly enough, many diabetics develop redness over the hands and feet. And this is thought to be due to abnormalities in how the blood vessels dilate there. They can have persistent redness. The extremities often are very cool and sensate, you know, they don't heat up well just due to poor circulation. Number 11 is actually going to be your nails. So diabetics, because they have poor circulation and neuropathy, that ends up impacting the health of the nails. And you get what's called nail dystrophy, basically brittle, thickened, kind of crumbling nails that and cracking around the nail beds that unfortunately serves as a very hospitable environment for nail fungus so diabetics are prone to nail fungus number 12 is something called a perforating disorder it's these bumps that have a rough what's called a keratotic center and this is most often seen in diabetics with renal failure who are on dialysis why it happens we're not entirely sure but uh, it's, it can be very itchy and more bumps come out with scratching. And when you biopsy one of these bumps and look at it under the microscope, the reason it's called a perforating disorder is because what is in the center, that keratotic rough bump in the center of the bump, if you look at it under the microscope, it's actually um, collagen and elastin that is getting extruded out to the surface of the skin from the deeper layers of the skin. So it's you know something that we see in diabetics who have renal failure, oftentimes on dialysis. Now, I already talked to you guys about necrobiosis lipoidica, how that happens on the shins most often and can ulcerate. I talked to you guys about acral gangrene uh, on the hands and feet, but another thing that is related to the neuropathy is the formation of ulcers. That can happen on the lower legs, but it can happen on the feet as well. Anywhere where you have chronic pressure, the skin just breaks down and you have poor sensation there due to the neuropathy. And that can be very, very challenging to heal because again, diabetics have very poor wound healing. They often have to see a specialist to have these treated. All right, so diabetics, they have poor healing, poor circulation, they get neuropathy, and they have uh, an impaired immune system. And all of these things, you know, it leads to skin breakdown and makes them very, very, very prone to a wide variety of skin infections. And one of the more common types of skin infections that diabetics get is candida. It's a yeast, um, you know, it causes yeast infections in women in the genital area. It also can cause yeast infections of the genitalia in men. Uh, it can cause a condition in the mouth, on the, the corners of the mouth known as angular chelitis. It can impact the tongue. Um, you can get a yeast infection of the tongue, on the skin, the nails, it's called a candidal paronychia. Now diabetics also can get a yeast infection in the web spaces between their fingers. It's called erosio interdigita blastomycetica, EIB. It can cause little cracks 
in the skin, allow for entry of other microorganisms, put you at risk for you know, a more severe type of infection. But it's a combination of poor circulation, impaired immune, an impaired immune system, and an impaired skin barrier that really just makes diabetics quite prone to yeast infections. Number 15, another type of infection is gonna be a bacterial skin infection. And similarly to why diabetics are at risk for yeast infections, they're likewise at risk for a variety of bacterial infections, staph bacteria that can cause impetigo, it can cause uh, folliculitis, which is an infection of the hair follicle. Diabetics can get a type of skin infection called erythrasma, this red painful rash due to a bacteria called carinibacterium. Pseudomonas is a bacteria that can infect the ear, cause an ear infection, but in diabetics, because of their poor uh, circulation, their impaired immune system, that bacteria can actually turn deadly in the ear. It can get into the bone and actually get into the brain. I mean, it can be life-threatening. Number 16 is gonna be fungal infections like ringworm, toenail fungus, foot fungus. Diabetics typically have typically have foot fungus or skin. Again, it is it is a uh, ripe for colonization of yeast, bacteria, and in this case, what are called dermatophytes, a type of skin fungus. And last but not least, number 17, being a diabetic, you can have uh, persistent facial redness. You can have a red face. It can also affect the neck and the upper chest. This is called rubiosis. Not entirely sure why this happens, but it is pretty common, maybe due to, you know, the the microvascular disease that diabetics have. Fortunately, it does typically improve when the diabetes is under better control. All right, you guys, so those are 17 ways in which having diabetes can impact your skin. You know, diabetes, it's a serious medical condition. Regardless of the type that you have, it is pretty serious. It can, can and does impact pretty much every organ system. As I've said in all my videos, your skin is a window to what is going on internally. And you can see here how in the setting of diabetes with all of these underlying issues, it really surfaces quite literally to the skin. And there are a lot of clues going on to the patient's underlying condition, the severity of the disease, the chronicity of it. So if your doctor tells you that you have early diabetes or pre-diabetes insulin resistance, please take it seriously. I don't think people really realize the potential for severity with this condition um, because it, you know these things, they don't start appearing all at once but it can be the road that you're going down if you don't get it under control. And dietary and lifestyle changes can make a difference for sure. If you get that diagnosis from your doctor, like, hey, I'm worried, you know, your sugars are high, or something called the hemoglobin A1C, definitely take it seriously. You know, it's your life. These are, these are things that can show up if this gets out of hand, and it certainly can. And I've only scratched the surface here of some of the more common skin findings, but we're talking about diabetes. I mean, I already alluded to the neuropathy. You can lose a limb. Uh, that is not uncommon. End-stage renal disease in diabetics, having to be on dialysis. Um, it's a serious disease. I would not wish this on anyone. On, and so if you, if somebody has, if your doctor has told you that they're concerned that you have, you know, elevated blood glucose, signs of early diabetes, definitely do whatever you can to rein in whatever lifestyle factors you can. Exercising, changing up your diet, um, and and try, try and you know be proactive about it because this is the last thing that you want. All right, you guys, I hope this video was informative and helpful. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.